Hi class, this is Dr. Jones and I'm making a video to show you how you can also calculate the molar heat capacity graphically using the law of the long and petite. And so I'm going to begin by doing four column headings and entering in some data from the experiment. So the first column heading I'm going to enter is the element or the metal. The second one is actually the uh, molar mass and it's in units of grams per mole. When you enter this in you'll notice that the words go past the end of the cell and so what I can do to resize the cell is if I move my cursor to the border between cells B and C it becomes um, an arrow that points in both directions if I double click with that arrow it automatically resizes that cell. The next cell is going to be 1 over the molar mass as this is in units of moles per gram which are the inverse units. <coughs> and the reason that I'm using 1 over the molar mass is because there is an inverse relationship um, between the specific heat capacity and the molar mass. That is as one goes up the other goes down. So again, I'm going to resize the cell. And finally, I'm going to enter in my specific heat capacity. And this is going to be in joules per gram degree Celsius. And I'm going to insert the degree symbol. So I have that resized. And now that I have all of my column headings, I'm going to begin to enter in data. And I'm just going to use the symbols for the elements. I'm going to enter in the molar masses that are found on the periodic table. And I need the inverse of the molar mass, so I'm actually going to have the spreadsheet to calculate this for me. So to do that, I would put an equal sign because I wanted to do a calculation. I'm going to put 1 divided by, and I'm going to click on the value for the molar mass. And it tells me that in this cell, I will have what is equal to 1 divided by what's in cell B2, which is the molar mass for that particular element, which is copper. I hit enter, and it actually does the calculation for me. And I can also tell it to do the calculations for all of the additional metals. And I will do that by, if I click on that cell, the lower right corner becomes a dark square. If I move my cursor to it, it becomes a dark plus. If I click on that plus, hold it down, and drag it, then it actually continues that calculation <coughs> down on the additional cells where I, where I actually um, drag the values. And so if I click here, for example, what's in this cell is equal to 1 over B3, which is the molar mass of aluminum. What's in this cell is 1 over B4, which is the molar mass of iron. I'm now going to enter in my specific heat capacities that I calculated, and those are to three significant digits. Sorry, I entered that in incorrectly. Try again. Okay, and so now I'm ready to graph, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight by dragging the inverted molar mass and specific heat capacities, and I want to have a scatter graph that has only markers and not connected, and if I click, it actually constructs the graph for me, and it shows me the values that I used in making the graph. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enter in the equation, the trend line. So I'm going to right click on one of the markers. I'm going to go to add trend line. I want a linear trend line that displays the equation and the R squared value on the chart. And I can see right away that this is a very good fit. The closer that the R squared value is to 1, the better the fit. So this is an excellent fit. And from this graph and the equation for this line, 
the slope gives me the molar heat capacity. So I'm going to actually type that in. So I'm going to put in molar heat capacity. And that is in joules per mole degree Celsius. So I have to insert the degree symbol. And the value is 22.569. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to actually move this chart to a new sheet. So I'm going to right click on the chart, go to move chart, and select new sheet and OK. And it moves the chart to a new sheet. And now I'm going to enter in the axis labels and also a title for this particular uh, graph. So I go to the chart 2 that says layout. I'm going to add a horizontal axis. I'm going to put it below the axis. And I'm actually going to put what I have graphed here. And if you remember, this is 1 over the molar mass. And I'll include the units in parentheses. So this is moles per gram. I am going to enter in a vertical axis and I'm going to use the rotated vertical axis. This is the specific heat capacity. And this of course is in joules per gram degree Celsius. Again I have to insert the degree symbol. And go to layout, chart title, and the chart title. Since I know what this relationship is, I don't use the word the relationship between. I know that this is a law of DeLong and Petit plot. Okay, for aluminum, copper, and iron. Okay, so I've labeled my axes with the appropriate units and I also have a title that is a descriptive title where I know exactly what this is. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to change the title of the chart sheet and I'm going to right click on it and go to rename and I'm just going to put this is a law of DeLong and Petit plot. Okay. And I'll make a couple more comments about this actual equation. So I've already mentioned that the slope for the line gives us the molar heat capacity. Well, the intercept exists because our calorimeter, which was our two styrofoam cups, were not perfect insulators. And so a small amount of heat flow into the styrofoam cups and that is what is illustrated by our intercept here and that's also why there's error that's associated with this. Okay, So this is something that can be explained because of the equipment that we use. So that's completely acceptable. Um, I'm going to go back to the sheet which has my data and I'm also going to rename this in the same way as a law of DeLong and Petit data. Okay. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the percent error. And if you remember from the procedure, the correct molar heat capacity was 24.9. <coughs> Excuse me, since I want to make a calculation, I'm going to put equal, open parentheses, 24.9, and I'm going to subtract the calculated value from my plot. So I'm going to click on that cell. So I'm subtracting the value in cell D8. Close parentheses. Divided by 24.9 times 100. And that gives me the percent error, which again is less than 10%, which is acceptable. And we expect that because this does obey the law of DeLong and Petit. 
So I hope this video has been helpful in explaining how to graph this data and how to determine this molar heat capacity graphically. Uh, there will be a link in the test center that includes an assignment box where you can upload the Excel spreadsheet that's associated with determining this graphically. Uh, and if you have any other questions, you can contact me or your Zoom Community 2 instructor. So I hope that this has been helpful.